level 20. Was not. Was. It fell down. It doesn't count. It does. As long as you hit the board, it counts. Doesn't. It was an uneventful afternoon late in the summer, and the three friends amused themselves as best they could. Hey, guys, somebody spotted a UFO in this area. A real flying saucer. It says so in this UFO magazine. It's only madmen who see UFOs, or else they're lying about it. There is actual evidence that people have seen UFOs. Here? Nah, not here. But we could get some proof. We could go UFO spotting. Oh, what a waste of time. Let's go and play roles in violin instead. What's that? I got this from my grandfather. When he was young, the rosin violin was the best trick in the world. You pin a thread to the window with a drawing pin, then keep out of sight and scrape the piece of resin along the thread. It sounds like the worst cat fight ever heard. Dead cool. That's nothing compared to a UFO. We're not gonna see any UFOs. Maybe we will. We can probably get the girls to come too. Girls think that UFOs are really exciting. I promise you. Mm, okay then. Hi, do you want to come with us on a really cool adventure? Huh, I can't think of anything more boring. UFOs, they're for real nerds. Yes, but, um, uh, uh, well, 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 we're going to eat all of these crisps and sweets too. Well, okay then. Ideally, we should be on top of a high mountain, but this should do, said Jerry, and managed to somehow point without dropping any of the equipment. Is something going to happen soon? Oh, we've been waiting for ages. You have to have patience when you're UFO spotting. Exactly. You never know when the men from Mars are going to land. There is no life on Mars, idiot. <laughs> It's probably about time we were going home now. No, wait. Something is going to happen soon. Look there. What was that? <laughs> there is something. There's something. Oh, oh dear. Yes, actually, there is something. Quiet. I can hear something. Everyone quietened and waited, tensed. <laughs> There's someone there. It's a creature. We're having a close encounter. Jerry, you know it's bedtime in an hour. Jerry's dad, out jogging. Is that your UFO? What a con. We're leaving now. Thanks for the crisps. You knew all along that it was your dad, screamed Frank, and jumped up and down in anger. You made it all up. But don't try and get out of it, Fibber. <laughs> no, no, mercy, spare me, I'm a friend. Did you see that? What shall we do? We have to save him. How? They're super intelligent beings from another part of the universe. We don't stand a chance. Maybe we could swap it for someone else. Frank, are you all right? What? What happened? Do you see anything amazing in there? Examine and record. What? Examine and record. Examine and record. Wait for us, Frank. Stop a minute, Frank. And record. The space creatures must have programmed him somehow. Frank walked for a long while until... Roy Johnson's house! What is he going to do here? <laughs> nice one, Frank. Roy Johnson is going to go potty. What a sound. Perfect! What on earth is that terrible racket? Come on, Frank. Let's get out of here. Pesky kid, just you wait. Destroy mankind. Destroy mankind. 
Come on, we have to go. Destroy mankind. Destroy mankind. So, it's you. You little... Destroy mankind. Destroy mankind. He's gone mad. You irritating child! Stop with that noise when I tell you to! You ruined everything with your fibs. Your dad, eh? You ruined a good chance with Linda for me. Thomas, Eric, and even Jerry were happy that Frank had become his old self again. But it's true, it's true. I swear on my life, it landed in the middle of the field. Sure. It was probably full of little green men, too, huh? Yes, exactly. And they dragged Frank into their spaceship. It was probably Jerry's dad skating around on rollerblades. And then when he came out, he had two and ten on his head. And Frank just kept on repeating, examine and record, examine and record. Nothing could make the girls believe one single word of the boy's story. Tell them then, Frank. You tell them. Tell them what? About the spaceship. When they dragged you inside. What are you going on about? Stop fooling around. Tell them now. You've all gone mad. UFO duds. Stop fooling around and tell them. Tell them what? Stop it. You know what? Destroy mankind. Destroy mankind. Destroy mankind. Stop fooling around. Cut it out. Stop it, Frank. Frank was in a hurry to open his present. He quickly ripped off the newspaper wrapping, in which the notorious P.E. teacher proudly held a trophy for the first prize in the P.E. teacher's district long jump championships. The three friends met, as usual, down by the shop after school. It was a lovely day, and Frank was in an excessively good mood, as he had just received a second-hand, as-new, two-geared bicycle with pedal brakes. Eh, what do you reckon, guys? It's one of those bikes which you have to pedal backwards to break. It makes fantastic tire tracks when you break fast. Said Frank to Thomas and Eric, who listlessly waved back to their friend who was pedaling frantically. That's nothing. It's dangerous as well. Answered Thomas and Eric sullenly. Hi, little kids. What are you playing? Frank has got a new bike. One of those that breaks when you pedal backwards. Hey, what do you say, guys? That was pretty cool slamming, huh? Wow, wow cool. cool. Do, do it, it again. again. Oh, that's nothing. I've got one of those kind of bikes, too. That tiny mark is nothing. Said Jerry to Frank, who instantly turned bright red with anger. Nothing? Is this nothing? Shouted Frank with great effort, as he was so angry that he nearly choked. Of course it's something, but nothing compared with the brake tracks I can do. But then again, I'm the world champion in brake slamming. I've got the trophy at home to prove it. Why, you, 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 airhead! You're gonna be... Frank was so indignant that he had to sit down and catch his breath. Linda took a big lick of her ice cream and... Exciting. Prue is the best. The one who wins gets a yummy kiss from me. And one from me, too. <laughs> Soon Frank was up on his feet again and Jerry and Frank decided to see who could make the longest skid mark. Jerry ran home to get his bike. Thomas flipped a coin. Jerry got to start. Frank! Five and a half sneakers! Yes! Shouted Jerry yes. and waved both arms triumphantly in the air. Now it's my turn. I'm gonna show you. You just wait. Frank braked for all that he was worth, screaming, best, and with surprising speed shot right in through the shop door, which luckily for Frank was just being opened by Mr. Bert Whistle, who was on his way out. How long were the brake tracks? Of course I won. There can't be any doubt about it. Seven sneakers, declared Eric, who under Thomas and Jerry's careful supervision paced the brake tracks. 
Yes! bellowed Frank as Monica sat picking the leftovers of eggshell from Frank's forehead. Where only a moment ago Frank's two-geared bicycle had been standing, there now stood a very large fizzy drinks lorry. The driver looked at some undefined scrap metal which was lying under the heavy lorry. No! That's what you're getting whipped for! The next day, the three friends were at the sawmill playing slave traders. They had drawn lots to see who was going to be slave trader and who would be slaves. Eric had won and had therefore brought his ice hockey stick so that he could, in a realistic way, control his slaves. After having been humiliated as a slave for an hour or so, it was time for Frank to go home and have dinner. Frank walked homewards with heavy steps, while Eric commanded Thomas to hold a piece of planking on straight arms for at least an hour. Yes! Well, boys, what do you say now, then? Frank's happiness knew no boundaries. Thomas, Eric and Jerry, who had also turned up at the sawmill while Frank was at home, stood dumbfounded with admiration and envy. What do you say now then, guys? 21 gears. And this one has handbrakes. Could one get a test ride? Eric and Thomas, realizing before they had even finished talking how ridiculous the question sounded, got themselves into a defensive pose in preparation for the attack that soon bombarded theirs and Jerry's bodies. You could always have the trophy, said Jerry with great effort. Which trophy? World Championship trophy in brake slamming. Have you really got a real trophy? It must be super valuable. Imagine, a guy with a trophy? I wouldn't say no to that. Frank's eyes gleamed. He could see himself with the trophy in his hand, admired by all the tastiest girls in school. But he knew what he had to do in return. He had to lend Jerry the bicycle. Okay, you can borrow the bike to go home and fetch the trophy. And give it to me. Be very careful with my bike! Linda, wasn't I gonna get something because I won the brake slamming competition? Nothing that I can remember. Can you girls? But I remember. You can have one for me. <laughs> <laughs> the three friends sat on a stack of planks and waited and waited. After a very long while, they heard the distant sound of sirens from a fire engine or an ambulance. It sounded like it stopped over by the church. Right. were Jerry's first words when he woke up in the intensive care unit of the hospital. I pedaled backwards for all I was worth, but it wouldn't break. Oh, and then you went right into the church wall. Mm, yes. This one has handbrakes, you idiot, informed Frank, who, considering the circumstances, was quite pleased as he had been allowed into a real intensive care unit and got to see all the gadgets. He also had the trophy, which proved that he was the world champion in brake slamming. Admiringly, he studied the brass plaque with the inscription, First Prize in the P.E. Teachers District Long Jump Championships. And now for something never seen before. Three ants standing on their back legs simultaneously. Bravo! What's this then? Jerry's kindergarten circus? Just watch and see. They can do hundreds of tricks. Are you playing with pinecone boys? What? Not us three. But Jerry is. <laughs> the boys are playing with pine cones. All of a sudden, something extraordinary happened. Ah! Wow! A real circus! Ostriches, you can ride them. The 
three friends and Jerry ran straight over to the exciting circus camp. I wonder if there are any lions or tigers. Maybe they have female Hungarian mud wrestlers. Hope Derek, who had often heard his father speak fondly of this particular circus attraction. I know how we can sneak in to see the animals. Big deal. What would that achieve? It just smells of elephant poo in there. Yeah, well, they've got bears, camels, and walruses, and giant ostriches. Babble Jerry excitedly. Jerry conducted the three friends to the animal tent without being discovered. They crept inside and entered an exciting new world. Check out the camels, pointed Eric, and all the friends rushed towards the humpbacked animals. We should have something to feed them with. There's loads of hay in there, noticed Jerry, and stepped towards what he thought must be the haystack. Ostriches didn't give a hoot for Jerry's cries. I was just getting some hay. It's best we clear off now, suggested Frank, and everyone thought it was a good idea. Hurry up then! The ringmaster had a few things to discuss with the three friends. Where are my ostriches? You brats! You've ruined our best act! Both of the ostriches were in the neighborhood and about to equate themselves with the locals. The ostriches also acquainted themselves with Jerry's mother's freshly baked apple pie. If those ostriches don't come back to the circus, we won't be getting any laughs for ten years. Jerry thought for a while. I know, we can ride them, said Jerry convincingly. What? How do you know? You, you can see it on the poster. We can ride them back to the circus. Jerry threw himself bravely into his task. Get on with it. Jerry took the deciding leap and everything seemed to be going to plan. Maybe not quite according to plan. Are you crazy? <laughs> they can't stand being ridden. But the poster. Yes, yes, but it's only for the advertising, though. They're worth a fortune, and I want every single penny back. Do you hear me? The ringmaster, who, despite everything, was a good-hearted man, let the three friends work off their debt. For the circus. And there's Thomas. Ice cream. Sweets. There were many exciting duties at the circus. We proudly present the Shepnick Brothers. Exotic, Frank. Their punishment had turned into quite a dream situation. When we finished here, we're going to start our own circus. You're invited to the premiere. Wow! Success was guaranteed. All they needed was a little money to buy some animals and a clown's nose. After the last performance, the ringmaster, despite everything, was very pleased with their contribution. Never before had he seen such enthusiasm in such an inexperienced group of artists. When the two ostriches appeared unexpectedly from nowhere, without Jerry, he was beside himself with joy. <laughs> of course you deserve to be paid, Lance. You've done a really good job. Great! Now we have money for our circus! It was almost too good to be true. Are these your friends? Yes. Good. Then you can pay for your ticket. You don't get a free ride when you travel as far as you just did. 
Easy come, easy go. Well, easy go at least. You haven't seen all they can do yet. Ants are very intelligent creatures. That isn't a real circus. How pathetic. Come on, girls. Let's get out of here. Come on, girls. Let's get out of my life.